Livestock producers know the importance of quality genetics. And thanks to new technology like artificial insemination and embryo transfer, the speed at which producers can influence their genetics in the herd is picking up momentum. Well, that same technology is also increasing the speed at which things like genetic defects can be spread. Well, thanks to some new tests, finding and potentially eliminating those problems is all but a DNA sample away. On a rainy, wet day in Poto, Oklahoma, Danny Wan can't get much accomplished outside. But that doesn't mean he isn't still thinking about the 250 Angus cattle dotted across the family's property. Well, we try to raise the registered Angus cows best we can. Between AI and embryo transfer, the Wan Genetics Program has yielded positive results over the last several years. However, in 2008 and 2009, a recessive genetic defect called curly calf syndrome started popping up across the breed. The syndrome usually results in stillborn calves with curled or twisted legs and spine. My first reaction was what bulls are involved. That was, you know, and then the list came out and I thought, okay, we're not gonna be too bad. We haven't used a lot of these bulls. And then there was one bull popped up that nobody expected that we had used. So that's the one that kind of caught us although we weren't damaged as bad as a lot of people. Like people, genetic defects in cattle are nothing new and definitely not specific to only one breed. In the 50s and 60s, for instance, we'll remember the fear that our fathers and grandfathers had whenever they went to buy a bull about the genetic defect snorter dwarfism. Well, uh, the situation back then was much more difficult to handle than it is today. Back then, it took up to four years to get 90% confidence in a bull's genetic soundness. Today, thanks to DNA testing, those problems can be identified much sooner. Then we can take a blood sample or a hair sample, a skin sample, send it to a laboratory. They can give us an answer within a, a, a week to 10 days, and we can identify which of these animals are carriers, which ones are free, and then go about our business of, of culling those carrier animals. We've lost uh, between 20 and 30 head out of it that we've hauled them to the sale barn, used the cows for embryo transfer, used them for recips, and, and we pretty much got them moved out. A move that cost seed stock providers like the Juan Ranch and other Angus producers thousands of dollars. Experts say before hauling off your herd, it's important to focus on what the operation is trying to accomplish because I think there's so many ways of managing around this without doing a lot of heavy culling out of your herd. If you've had some incidences of uh, some of the genetic defects showing up, one of the easy ways to solve it is crossbreeding. The chances that that defect is going to occur if we mate two different breeds of cattle together, uh, that is extremely remote. The other way, of course, to work around it is through the, the records that we have available, as we've mentioned uh, in the testing procedures, test and find out which bulls are uh, free of the genetic defect. And even though we might have a few carrier cows in our herd, then uh, we can uh, work around it by always using bulls that are free of the genetic defect. I think it's as easily taken out as it was put in. I think you can take it out in, the, in your next generation. For Danny Wan and his family, they're looking forward to worrying about other issues, such as cattle markets, calving season, and keeping the feed truck from getting stuck in the mud.